Please let, allow me to introduce our next speaker, an Ajahn Sulak Sivaraksa, who is, I'm sure you know, a very prominent and outspoken Thai intellectual and social critic. He is a teacher, a scholar, a publisher, an activist, the founder of many organizations, and the author of over 100 publications in both Thai and English. As Praweetan mentioned earlier, as of, I think it was 1995, he remains the sole individual to be acquitted on charges of Les Majeste. And in that same year, he would be, is that right, something like that, 95? Great. <laughs> in that same year, he would be accorded the prestigious Right Livelihood Award, where the selection panel would commend his vision, his activism, his spirit, and his commitment to the quest for development that is rooted in democracy, justice, and integrity. Um, before we go further, I might just say the first time I met Ajahn Sulak was up at the Prawihan Temple last year. Um, and I'd, I'd not met him before, uh, but in a room full of Kun Thayan, Kun Khmer. Yeah, so I was very fortunate because when Ajahn entered the room and there are about 500 people um, down at Prawihan in this room, everybody stopped. And uh, he was the only person in amongst many speakers to say the one thing that I kind of wanted to hear as a journalist. And uh, he said, we've done wrong. This is a bad idea. We've created harm for nothing. Um, so with those very succinct words, I look forward to hearing from him today. Please welcome Ajahn Sulak Sivaraksa. In fact, uh, last month, there was a public television from Germany came to interview me. And they have a, a new program called Black Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and they interviewed me on the, the, the Crown Prince. And they said that nobody would dare to give them an interview except me. <laughs> so they came all the way from Berlin to interview me. And after interviewing me, they're going to Spain to interview the King of Spain. He is also a black sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding the <coughs> the amendment of Article One One Two, I was invited to speak at Thai Parliament in January, and it was full house. Both the Senate and the House representative came to listen to me, and I had it translated, published here already, seeds of peace, available outside, only 100 baht each. <laughs> <laughs> this is also in Thai, in Pajarayasan, so I will not repeat what I have said. But what I want to say is this, this month is Jan uh, June, and as you know, on the 24th of June, we end the absolute monarchy. And on the 27th of June, 80 years ago, the first constitution was signed by the king. And that stated the powers of Siam, of the Rem, belong to the people. Before that, the absolute power belonged to the king. It entirely changed. And if I may say so, Constitutional monarchy existed from 32 to 48. Quite interesting, despite the fact that we had dictators, but the monarchy was under constitution. After the coup ended democracy, they tried to play with the monarchy. Pibun Songkram made use of the monarchy. Yet, he controlled the monarch tightly. The present king could only spend three weeks at Hoi Hin. He couldn't go anywhere within the kingdom. If he want to buy a car, the government had to give permission. And if anybody want to have a special cremation ceremony and so on, royal permission, 
the government has to approve. So I think most of us were concerned about the king. We feel that you know he's, he's not all that free. Then in 1957, when Suri came into power, he could convince the Americans that to save this country from communism, you have to make the constitution, you have to make the monarchy absolute, sacred, and likewise to make Buddhism sacred. And ever since, the monarchy has become something no longer constitutional. And if I may say so, the Americans back dictators in this country and back absolute monarchy in this country. I don't want to go into the detail of the law, but I want to go into the Thai psychology on the monarchy. What's his name? The, 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 the leading journalist? He's, he's, a ni- he's a nice man, but he has mo- no moral courage. Why you have such, such a fear? If journalism, if the journalists have more guts, if they can speak critically, openly, things would change tremendously. But they all avoid the issues. And you have people like, what's his name? The, 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 the man from the, the Chai Patana part. Uh, uh, hmm? uh, so, so, <laughs> made, you know? And the, 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 the journalists praise him. Wonderful, you know. He's a stupid man. <laughs> and what he said, you know, if the, the journalists are clever, you can charge him for less money. Yes. He gave an interview on Thai public, public uh, TBBS, an interview by uh, uh, Top Jo. Ah, yeah. Pin Jo asked Sumit, and Sumit, ah, I must tell you, Kun Pin Jo. The king speak to me personally. And he said, the Thai people are so poor. That's why they're not interested in democracy. <laughs> I mean, that man, whether he quote the king rightly or, or wrongly, he should be persecuted. If the poor are not interested in democracy, that rubbish. The Indian people are much poorer than the Thai people. And they have been in democratic system since they became independent. And the poor people vote can come in out in and out. And you think the poor Thais are more stupid than the Indians? Sumed, you see. I think Sumed is much more stupid than, than the, 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 the majority of the Thai people. <laughs> and yet, none of the journalists say anything. We have to blame the journalists. Not to mention educational institutions. All universities are fairly hopeless. None of them care for freedom. None of them care for truth. None of them care for moral courage. They're interested in money, in power. And each university claims to be democratic. But in fact, it's run by a group of mafias, real mafias. Now, let me touch on, I mean, we try to say the sacredness of the monarchy and all that. I think this rubbish only came since Saritanarat. Because I happen to know Thai history a little bit. Because Thai culture linked closely with the teaching of the Buddha. And the monks have been teaching the people all these years around the country, not to trust the monarchs. In the Chataka story, it's supposed to be previous life of the Buddha. There were 500 of them written in India. There are 50 of them written in Chiang Mai. All these Chataka stories, supposed to be previous life of the Buddha. And in this Chataka, all the kings were bad. Why? Because the king represent power represent violence. In Buddhism, the root cause of suffering are violence or power, greed.
greed, riches, and delusion, the wrong kind of education they, 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 they provide. So I think on the whole, people don't take the monarchy as that sacred and what wonderful as they try to tell you in the media, they try to tell you in education institutes. The monarchy became prominent only when Rama the Fifth charged the Sangha. It used to be the two wheels, you know. In the Buddhist kingdom, you have the wheel of powers represented by the king and the wheel of righteousness represented by the Sangha, the monkhood, balancing each other. But when Chulalongkorn became absolute, he put the monkhood under his control. And people don't realize that. And, and they pray Chulalongkorn, great kings. He done many, many bad things and they, no, nobody ever mentioned it. And now all the kings have done the wonderful thing. You know, narration on the great. That man was a sadist. Waging wars all the time. And you like that. Why? Because the army is the state in the state. When you like Naresu and you like the army, so the army is supreme. And that's why people don't realize. I don't know whether you challenge them. The budget for the military this year, how much more? And what does budget for? Where would the army fight when they fought Lao and they were defeated? <laughs> The Thai army only fight the Thai people with, with our arms. And they're good at playing golf and, and, and playing hun and so on. <laughs> and yet the, the army is supposed to protect the monarchy. In fact, the monarchy came down in 1932 because the military got rid of the, the monarchy. And they never learned this. So my proposal is that for the monarchy to survive, the monarch must keep clear from the army. And for the monarchy to survive, the monarch must also keep clear from the Crown Property Bureau, which own 30% of the land in Bangkok. And they chase people out like cats and dogs in order to make more money, in order to worship uh, globalization. I think if the monarch is clear from greed, that is the Land Property Bureau, if they're clear from, uh, from the army, which represent power, I think the monarchy will become less powerful, like it used to be during people's regime. I think that's the only way for the monarchy to survive under the constitution. And that's the only way the monarchy would be good for the people. Because what we need is a symbol of unity. The king should be the first among equal. No special privilege of any kind. And, and none of the royal family should be geniuses. You know, they, we have so many geniuses. A great sci scientist, a great artist, they're all rubbish. <laughs> and they can't charge me for defaming the king either. Because those princes are not within the, the law. The law only protects the king, the queen, and the, and the, and the crown prince. And yet we are so afraid. The police came to me this morning. <laughs> and not against me, but I was called as a witness. So the report was charged for defaming the king, as Pravit and now is being charged. And what he said, he, he, he wrote nine points. And a, a silly man in, in uh, Roy Ed charge him. And he had to go to Roy Ed to defend his case. And of the nine, nine, nine points, point number one, Surapur said, the king should not interfere in politics. Number, number two, there should not be demand for loyalty to the king. And I said, what's wrong with that? They came to interview me, spent all our tax money, you know, coming all the way from right at interview me. Constitutional monarchy cannot be involved in politics. So what Sirapot said, and nothing, nothing wrong, legally. And you cannot demand loyalty, you cannot demand uh, love 
It's natural. And yet, these sort of things have been charged all the time. Yes, I myself have been, have been charged many times. But, but luckily, I have won the case so far. But perhaps tonight, I may not win the case. I better stop here for the time being. Thank you.